I think the spherical lenses, you know, all of them, I mean, the last 20 years have been so good that they make no real difference, the spherical primes. There are no real great anamorphic zooms, and it's still, it's still a problem. <laughs> um, a lot of the old conversions cut the back off, the little, you know, little pillow, look like a little uh, PK chewing gum, a little elliptical bit of uh, glass in the back, which was compressing, you know, you're decompressing the lens through a very small piece of glass, which could lead to problems, softness and edges and things, rather than a big, you know, wide, you know, like a nice prime. You know, th there's nothing natural about an anamorphic lens. It's squashed, it's compressed, it's, you know, everything in optical physics is round, your eyes, the lenses do, you're making it jump through hoops. Um, so they're all hand cut, there's hand cut. Uh, they're all slightly different, you know, an anamorphic E is, you know, 50 mil made by the same guy, and it can be totally different, totally different in colour and when they mump and when they pull focus through the range, they can do different things characteristically. So that they are very organic, and I think that's why a lot of people have started putting them onto the digital cameras, because, you know, a spherical lens and a digital camera can look very brutal and very sharp, and people are inclining towards go back to older lenses to try and take away some of that uh, brittleness that horrible edgy sharpness you get because the animal feet are softer they don't they hold focus in the middle they fall off the edges they've been yet they do strange things at different distances they have all sorts of mad flares and and uh, not so much the big newton rings you get but also other sort of softer weird failing flares which can fog the film and that was Going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, when you had these great DPs who would shoot a scope, they knew they couldn't light to the level quite often that the anamorphic lenses require, but they knew if they put that enough light flow into the lens that it would actually fog the image and bring it up, bring the blacks out. Real skillful. They couldn't see that. You didn't get a monitor. They, they knew that by looking through a 1974 reflective viewfinder. Dim image. You had no idea really what you were getting. You couldn't even see it optically, because even the optical system on the viewfinder would give a level of stuff as well. You know, that's going through a prism, or it's coming off a mirror, going through a prism, going through a thing, going through a snoop, going through a magnifier, and a zoom on. So, you know, you didn't really know. So, uh, but I think, you know, people are a lot more confident now with the anamorphic lenses, because they can put the image up, they can see the flares, they can see what they're getting, they can iris it down deeper. Um, but, but before, you were just like looking at a meter, looking at the iris, and then guessing what light was in the room, what was going to change the ambience. So people are using more anamorphics on digital because they can see what they do. They're going for more vintage looks. It, 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 it mushes up the image a bit more. It makes it more filmic, if you will. It gives you better depth of focus. You can focus on the actors more because it's got greater depth of field. Low light, you want a candle, you know, I always think with candles, you know, you want, you know, the fire, you want the fire to work in the room. You know, if I lit a candle here and you said this was a night light, well, it wouldn't, the candle wouldn't do anything. You think, well, why has he got burning a candle? He can see perfectly well in there. That's what it bugged me, bugged me about old 50s films, but they didn't really have this stock. But also they used to light in that bang crash way, which I think was very sophisticated. So you want your candle to work. You want it to feel like it's lighting at least something my leg or a side of thing or a little bit of glow around the, the the actual flame itself and then you try and sneak in a light behind it to land on my face like this one now then you don't want to make sure this is too bright because then it still looks like you're overpowering the candle so what's good then is to have some very good spherical fast lenses that can hold the focus so you can go down into that depth Right, if you just shoot anamorphic, it, your blacks would start swimming, the focus would be very shallow, the lenses wouldn't really be biting, because they only really look good in about 284, even 5.6, some of the old DPs would only shoot at 5.6, because that's when they really crunch and they start looking really solid. Like those old Bond films, really solid, nice looking films, they shot at 5.6, day, night, whatever, Oof, can you imagine? Then, you know, if you want to go the other way, you better make sure you've got a, a you know, you want your cameras to say to work, you want the fire to feel like it's lighting into the room with it and of course you're putting in stuff behind it you're supplementing everything but you need to you need to make sure you've got a lens that will help you get down there and a spherical lens even if it's underexposed will look a lot better underexposed than an anamorphic lens because you get a true stop they'll hold the sharpness better they'll even though it'll be underexposed the blacks will be solid and an anamorphic lens when it's underexposed everything starts wobbling you can't see the edges of things anymore they mush in together um, but again, people are more confident now because they can see it on their monitor and they just keep upping the ASA on their RED or the Alexa until it's right. So that old skill has gone.
You, know, you don't have to be as good. I said that earlier. You do not have to be as good. You can do more stuff. You know, so I shot Gladiator Super 35 because I knew you had to do a lot of shots and it was going to be low light and, blah, 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 and a lot of contrast, which some of the, the time the, the anamorphic lenses weren't really good at handling contrast. You'd have something against a bright window and they'd, you, know, you wouldn't be able to hold them inside. There'd, there'd be a lot of veiling or fogging, not so much flaring, but some a veiling of light filling into the lens because it hit the front compressed square element and it would travel all across it. So that was a consideration um, and I thought it's more important to get a volume of shots than to be to, to shoot a beautiful scope film. Um, so that's what we did and I think really really like that. 